Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you stopping by to view this quick video. This actually is week number three of the probably 52 weeks or so <laughs> that I'm going to be doing videos in line with um, sharing information about the plight of the Black man in America or just Black people in general. That's what I'm focused on. I'm going to do it a quarter at a time, every three, well, I'm going to say every three months, I'm going to assess and see where I am. So I'm going real hard the first three months and uh, doing three videos a week along with a podcast show just to get some information out because, you know, uh, we have a short period of time on the planet and simply because of that, it's absolutely necessary that we get things documented out in the open, Right. So what I'm titling this video is, and I did some research this week and I went on a site and someone had this information and I'm just sharing the information. I didn't create the information. I'm just sharing the information. Understand that, that's how that works. And this one is titled, The Truth Behind Systematic Racism. You've heard of that, right? Systematic racism. Well, let me share this with you. In 1866, one year after the 13th Amendment was ratified, the amendment that ended slavery, Alabama, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Georgia, Mississippi, Florida, Tennessee, and South Carolina began to lease out convicts for labor. And it was known as peonage, P-E-O-N, A-G-E, peonage. Now, this made the business of arresting Blacks very lucrative, which is why hundreds of white men were hired by these states as police officers. Their primary responsibility was to search out and arrest Blacks who were in violation of what they call Black codes. Now, once arrested, these men, women, and children would be leased to plantations where they would harvest cotton, tobacco, and sugarcane. Or they would be leased to work at coal mines or railroad companies. The owners of these businesses uh, would pay the state for every prisoner who worked for them, prison labor. This is how it happened. The 13th Amendment declared that neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as a punishment for a crime where uh, the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their ju ju jurisdiction ratified in 1965. That was ratified in 1965. Did you, get, did you catch what I just said? Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude could occur except as a punishment for a crime. Lawmakers use this phrase to make petty offenses crimes. Lawmakers use this phrase to make petty offenses crimes. When blacks were found guilty of committing these crimes, they were imprisoned and leased out to the same businesses that lost slaves after the passing of the 13th Amendment. That's right. You heard me right. Now, this system of convict, convict labor is called, again, peonage. The majority of white Southern farmers and business owners hated the 13th Amendment because it took away slave labor, which was free labor for them. As a way to appease them, the federal government turned a blind eye when Southern states used this clause in the 13th Amendment to establish laws called Black Codes. Now, what are Black Codes, you're probably asking? Well, here are a few examples of Black Codes. In Louisiana, it was illegal for a Black man to preach to Black congregation without special permission in writing from the president of the police department. If caught, he could be arrested and fined. If he could not pay the fines, which were unbelievably high, 
he would be forced to work for an individual or go to jail or prison where he would work until his debt was paid off. If a black person did not have a job, he or she could be arrested and imprisoned on the charge of vagrancy or loitering. Vagrancy or loitering. Now, imagine that. You're going looking for a job. You don't have a job. You're looking for a job. And they arrest you because you don't have a job and say that you're being a vagrant or you're loitering. Incredible. It's amazing what our people had to endure. Now, this next black code may make you cringe a little bit. In South Carolina, if the parent of a black child was considered vagrant, the judicial system allowed the police and or government agencies to apprentice the child in an at, in an employee in an employee well to an employer let me read that again in south carolina if the parent of a black child was considered vagrant the judicial system allowed the police and or government agencies to apprentice the child to an employer males could be held until the age of 21 and females could be held until the age of 18. This peonage is an example of systematic racism, racism established and perpetrated by government systems. Now, slavery was made legal by the US government segregation black codes. Jim Crow and peonage were all made legal by the government and upheld by the judicial system. These acts of racism were built into the system, which is where the term systematic racism is de derived. This is part of the black history that most of us were never told, never told. So that's my objective to share this information so that the ones who were never told or never had access to this information, voila, now you can have access to it. My question again becomes, once you know the truth, do you still believe the lie? Think about that. All right, again, my name is Larry James. My company is Speak With Larry. And as always, share with someone else what I've shared with you.